Hello everyone, I welcome you all to the 22nd online lecture of the course Engineering Thermodynamics. In the previous lecture, we have concluded our discussion on the power cycles and from this lecture onwards, we will start our discussion on another type of cycles which are nothing but reverse of the power cycles and these are known as nothing but our refrigeration cycles. Okay, so let me uh, start with the first uh, brief uh, introduction of the refrigeration process. Uh, so, as in case of power cycles, what we were mainly doing, our objective was to convert heat energy into some useful amount of work. However, in case of our refrigeration cycles, our objective is nothing but to maintain a system below the surrounding temperature. Okay, And in order to do so, what we have to do, we need to transfer the heat from low temperature body to a high temperature body. So that's why we need certain device. The device which is used to achieve the process of refrigeration is something which is known as a refrigerator. Okay. And uh, uh, one more uh, device which is in principle identical to that of refrigerator only, but the only difference is that here objective is heating rather than cooling. So this type of device is uh, known as a heat pump. So what I have done uh, over here, we are having two schematic representations. Uh, so one is for a refrigerator and the second one is for a heat pump. So if we see uh, in case of refrigerator, what we are having, we are having nothing but our system, so which we want to cool. So that's why I have written over here cold refrigerated space as our system. So this is nothing but this is our main system which we want to cool okay and say the temperature of this system is nothing but tl now if we have to cool this system uh, what we need to do we need to remove certain amount of heat so ql is the amount of heat that uh, we are removing from this system and this heat we are removing nothing but with the help of a device which is known as a refrigerator okay and then what we are doing this refrigerator because it has to now operate in a cyclic process. So what it will be doing, whatever the heat it has acquired from the system, it will be transferring a certain amount of heat to surrounding. So our surrounding is nothing but our warm environment, whatever we are having. So the temperature of surrounding over here will be nothing but TH and this TH is nothing but greater than TL. Okay. So this QH is the amount of heat which is being transferred to the surrounding. So over here if you see uh, what our refrigerator is doing, it is taking the heat from low temperature uh, system and then it is transferring to some high temperature reservoir. So this process cannot be uh, achieved spontaneously. So that's why or uh, naturally, so that's why what we have to do in our refrigerator, we have to give certain amount of work input. So we are supplying W amount of work. Okay. And now if we write the conservation of uh, energy, what will be happening? Whatever the net amount of work done we are supplying, that will be nothing but equal to QH minus QL. So that's why uh, when uh, we are rejecting the heat to the surroundings, so the magnitude of this heat is more in comparison to the heat which is taken from the system. So over here, one important thing you have to remember that our surrounding is nothing but our warm environment uh, where heat is actually whatever the heat refrigerator is taking a certain amount of heat is it is throwing out to the environment and this is done in order to achieve the process in a cyclic manner wherever our system over here is nothing but whatever the cold refrigerated space we are having so it means in case of a refrigerator our aim is to maintain this cold refrigerator system at temperature TL. Okay. Uh, now, if we consider the corresponding heat pump, in case of heat pump, what we uh, what we want to do, we want to maintain our system, which I have represented over here as warm house. So this temperature TH we want to maintain uh, at higher than surrounding temperature. Say my cold surrounding is having temperature TL. Okay. So what will be happening? Obviously, uh, through the walls of the house, because if say our outside temperature is nothing but equal to TL. So what will be happening through the walls of the house and doors and windows, 
uh, heat will be leaking into the surroundings. So because of that, inside the house temperature will uh, decrease. However, if we want to maintain temperature at some desired temperature pH, so what we need to do, the rate at which heat is leaking, we have to supply uh, the heat at the same rate into the house. So for that, what we are doing over here, we are adding QH amount of heat into this house and this is being done with the help of a device which is known as heat pump. So for this heat pump what we are having now, uh, this is nothing but our cold environment which is having temperature TL. From this environment we are taking QL amount of heat and then uh, adding over here W amount of work and uh, as a total it is resulting in QH amount of heat which is added to the house. Okay. So over here if you try to see uh, the principle of operation for both refrigerator and heat pump is nothing but identical. The only difference comes in our objective. So in one case the objective was to maintain the space at uh, below surrounding temperature and in second case we have to maintain the system above the surrounding temperature. So that's why if you uh, recall our earlier lectures where we defined the COP of a refrigerator that was nothing but equal to QL divided by W net where W net is nothing but QH minus QL and if we consider all the processes as reversible, so in that case the formulation of Carnot COP tells us, uh, uh, Carnot cycle tells us that this COP for refrigerator is nothing but equal to TL divided by TH minus TL. So this is nothing but maximum possible COP. Similarly, if we have to write down the COP of an heat pump, that will be nothing but equal to QH because now our objective is to heat the system. So that's why our objective uh, is achieved with the help of QH amount of heat. So that is our desired output and to achieve this we are giving W amount of work which is nothing but equal to QH minus QL. And if we uh, consider once again it as a Carnot uh, heat pump then we will be finding that final formulation of COP will be nothing but equal to TH divided by TH minus Okay, so these things we have seen earlier also in our earlier lectures and I have already told you that COP of an heat pump is nothing but COP of refrigerator uh, plus 1. Okay. Now uh, when we go for actual uh, refrigerating units, so for that we define the uh, capacity of refrigerator using some parameter which is known as ton of refrigeration. Okay. So for example, uh, when you go to the market for purchasing uh, air conditioners for your uh, home applications, so what we do, we generally go to the market and then we take either say 1.5 ton AC or 2 ton AC or 3 ton AC. So it means what we are having uh, the practical unit which measures the capacity of a refrigerator that is something which is known as ton of refrigeration. Okay. Now, what is this 1 ton, 2 ton, 3 ton? So, how to define the equivalent amount of heat in kilowatts? So, let me first describe the definition of 1 ton of refrigeration. So, now what I am doing, I am giving you the uh, formulation for 1 ton of refrigeration. So, what we are having, how we define 1 ton of refrigeration, what we do if we take 1000 kg of water. So what we are doing, we are taking 1000 kg of water at 0 degree Celsius. Okay. Now if we have to convert this 1000 kg of water into nothing but 1000 kg of ice and while we are converting this water into ice, equivalent amount of ice, we are maintaining the temperature once again at same uh, value which is 0 degree Celsius. Okay. And if we do this process in nothing but 24 hours, then whatever the rate at which we have to remove the energy, that rate is something which is known as 1 ton of refrigeration. Okay, So let me now write down in mathematical form, 1 ton of refrigeration will be uh, nothing but equal to mass of the water. So how much mass we are having? 1000 kg of water we are having. When we have to convert water at 0 degree Celsius into ice at 0 degree Celsius, what we have to do? We have to remove the heat 
how much heat we have to remove heat which is nothing but to equivalent to that of the heat of fusion okay uh, so heat of fusion of water is nothing but equal to 310 kJ per kg so it means for 1 kg of water we require uh, to remove 310 kJ so for 1000 it will be nothing but 1000 into 310 okay so this 310 is nothing but heat of fusion okay so this is heat of fusion for water then what we need to do because we are now calculating in rate form and this we are this process we are achieving in nothing but 24 hours so i will divide in order to uh, find out the rate by time so 24 hours and if i convert it into minutes i will multiply over here with 60 and from here we will be finding that 1 ton of refrigeration is nothing but equal to 211 Uh, kilojoule per minute okay similarly uh, now if we convert this amount of uh, uh, heat into kilojoule per second we will be finding finally as 3.51 kilojoule per second which i can directly write as kilowatt okay so this is the definition of one ton of refrigeration so it means if you are uh, 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 going to the market and purchasing an uh, air conditioning unit of uh, Three tons of refrigeration that will be nothing but equal to that of ten kilowatts. Okay. Okay. So after this uh, uh, brief uh, discussion about the refrigerator and heat pump, now uh, let us first discuss that how uh, 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 what is the idealized cycle based on which we design a refrigerator. Okay. So we have already studied Carnot cycle. for the case of uh, power producing devices where we were converting heat energy into work energy okay and we know uh, that carnot cycle is uh, nothing but a completely reversible cycle it means all the thermodynamic processes which we have seen in case of carnot cycle can be reversed fully okay and uh, also while we are reversing the processes of uh, carnot cycle what will be happening whatever the heat and work interactions we are having the direction of heat and work interactions will also be uh, reversing okay so what i have done over here i have included the schematic representation of an uh, reversed carnot cycle so we are having warm medium which is maintained at temperature th and we are having a cold medium which is maintained at temperature tl uh, now because what we have to do we have to reverse the process so what will be happening earlier at point tl we were having condenser where we were removing the heat from our working medium okay over here what will be happening because the process is reversing so what we will be doing we will be taking the heat from the cold medium and that heat we will be adding to our working fluid okay so while we are adding the heat into the working fluid the state of the working fluid is changing from point number 1 to point number to okay and during this change of state what is happening within the working medium liquid fraction is being converted into the vapor medium okay so this process is something which is close to the evaporation process where uh, uh, liquid changes into evaporator and uh, the device where we are doing this heat transfer that is something in general which is known as a heat exchanger and in particular over here because Uh, the liquid phase is changing into vapor phase because of the heat addition so that's why we are calling this device as nothing but evaporator okay after this uh, what we will be doing now uh, in our actual uh, carnot cycle we were having isentropic expansion now instead of expansion we have to because we are reversing the process so we have to go for the isentropic compression so 2 to 3 is nothing but my isentropic compression okay and after that uh, we were having some isothermal heat addition process so over here we will be having isothermal heat rejection process and as we are removing the heat vapor phase will be changing into the liquid phase so that's why we are calling this device over here as nothing but our condenser okay and after that we are having a turbine which will be actually leading to the isentropic expansion okay and uh, this will change the pressure of the working medium from condenser pressure to our evaporator pressure okay so uh, this diagram over here is nothing but equivalent ts diagram for the uh, different processes which i represented in uh, schematic representation so over here this process uh, number 3 to 4 is nothing but 
constant temperature. So if you see over here during the process number three to four, our temperature is uh, remaining constant. So that's why uh, this process three to four is nothing but isothermal heat rejection. Then process number four to one is nothing but our uh, uh, isentropic expansion. And one to two represents the isothermal heat addition. And then we are having process number two to three as nothing but isentropic compression process. Okay. So now what will be happening during the compression process? We need to add certain amount of work input. And uh, over here, uh, during the expansion process in the turbine, we will be getting certain amount of output work. Okay. So here we will be having W out I. Uh, and here we will be having W O output work. Okay, so now uh, this cycle is nothing but our uh, ideal reversed Carnot cycle. And in this cycle also, what we are do doing, we are removing QL amount of heat from uh, low temperature substance, and we are adding this heat to the high temperature medium. Okay, and uh, this we are achieving with the help of additional compressor and turbine unit in order to make its operation in a reversible cyclic manner okay uh, but uh, identical to that of a normal uh, carnot cycle this reverse carnot cycle is also having certain uh, limitations from the practical uh, application so that's why it is not uh, used directly in our practical refrigerators or air conditioners okay so what are the limitations uh, let me first describe so over here if you see the process number 3 to 4 and process number uh, 1 to 2 these are nothing but isothermal heat addition uh, and uh, isothermal heat rejection processes so these two processes are because our cycle is operating within the liquid vapor dome so that's why these processes are practically possible okay so these doesn't pose any problem from the practical considerations then uh, we are having process number uh, 2 to 3 so in this process 2 to 3 if you see what is happening we are having the mixture of liquid and vapor which is entering into the compressor okay so obviously this process is something which is not possible why because i have already described you in our earlier lectures that we are not having any device available which can compress the mixture of liquid and vapor though compressor can do this thing but what will be happening ultimately there will be cavitation uh, loss of efficiency and decrease in lifetime of the machine okay so that's why this process number two to three is something which is not practically possible. Then we are having process number uh, four to one in the turbine. So over here also, if you see uh, in process number four to one, what we will be having, we will be having very high moisture content. Okay, because point number four is nothing but saturated liquid, and uh, though in uh, during the expansion process, some of the liquid is being converted into vapor, but still the amount of moisture in the mixture of liquid and vapor is very very large so because of that it is also very difficult to operate the turbine cycle okay so what we will be doing uh, if we have to make this cycle work in practical scenarios first we have to super uh, we have to change the phase of this point number 2 whatever we are having mixture of liquid and vapor this we need to bring it to our saturated vapor point which i am marking over here nothing but two days okay and somehow what we have to do we need to achieve over here the expansion but at the same point of time uh, what we want we don't want turbine over here okay so what other device we know uh, from our earlier knowledge where we can achieve the expansion so if you recall to our earlier lectures we have studied uh, the throttling process which also leads to decrease in uh, pressure of the working medium by keeping or maintaining the enthalpy constant and this type of uh, uh, throttling process can be achieved in uh, nothing but our small capillary tubes okay or if we are having a certain expansion device and these expansion devices are many times made up of some porous materials which acts as uh, resistance to the flow of fluid okay so what we can do uh, the very in order to avoid these theoretical limitations 
uh, and uh, make the cycle possible in practical scenarios first thing we can do uh, to add heat such that uh, we are getting this point number 2 at completely saturated state so pure saturated vapor state okay and uh, while our motive is to decrease the pressure from condenser pressure to evaporator pressure means from point number 4 to point number 1 this process we can achieve with the help of a device which is nothing but a throttling device okay so let me now uh, talk about the ideal cycle based on which all the practical refrigerators and air conditioning units work okay so this type of ideal cycle is something which is known as ideal vapor compression refrigeration cycle okay so uh, if you see over here uh, what we have done so this is the uh, schematic representation of the diagram uh, of the cycle and uh, this next diagram is nothing but temperature and entropy plot for the same so if you see uh, what we have done in this cycle while we were doing the evaporation process so instead of uh, limiting ourselves within the liquid vapor dome we have uh, we have designed our evaporator such that we are getting saturated vapor state out of the evaporator okay so my point number 1 is nothing but saturated vapor state in our uh, revised uh, cycle okay and then 1 to 2 process is actually where the compression is taking place so that's why this compression process will be taking some work input okay now because of this compression what has happened at the exit of the compressor we have ended up in our superheated region okay so because of the superheated region now what will be happening when we will be having the heat removal in the condenser the process of heat removal now will not be uh, isothermal anymore rather this process will be becoming now nothing but isobaric process so now we are having constant pressure heat rejection in our condenser okay and after that what we are having we are having saturated liquid at the exit of the condenser now uh, what we have done at this point we have used nothing but our throttling device and in the throttling device what happens enthalpy remains constant so that's why this line 3 to 4 is nothing but a constant enthalpy line so over here h is constant and this we are getting as point number 4 at the inlet of the evaporator okay and the process 4 to 1 is happening inside our evaporator unit so now one important point i would like to discuss over here that instead of the throttle if we would have used turbine what would have happened instead of point 4 we would have ended up at point number 4 days okay and now if you see in uh, throttling device what what is happening we are having point number 4 at the entry of the evaporator and we know that enthalpy of point number 4 is nothing but more in comparison to that of the enthalpy of point number 4 days okay so uh, what would have happened so in actual scenario now what is happening as the phase is changing from point 4 to point 1 so that's why actual refrigeration effect if i find on a per kg basis that is nothing but equal to h1 minus h4 however if we would have used the turbine which would have resulted in isentropic expansion and our exit point would have been point number 4 dash in that case our refrigeration effect qr dash would have been h1 minus h4 which is nothing but more than our actual refrigeration uh, effect okay but one limitation of using the turbine is that uh, that though in this turbine we are getting certain amount of work also because over here what we are having in throttling device from point 3 to 4 we are having the isenthalpic process so over here we are not getting any output work whereas in case of process number 3 to 4 days we are having isentropic expansion so here we could have uh, got certain amount of work output also and we could have got increased refrigeration effect so ultimately this would have resulted in increase in overall uh, cop of the 
overall cycle. However, still we are not using the turbine. The reason is that because we know that turbine is an open system and in an open system work done is nothing but equal to minus integral of V into dP. And point number 3 is nothing but a saturated liquid and specific volume of point number 3 because it is a saturated liquid. So, uh, specific volume is very very small. So, that's why whatever the uh, work output we could have got from the turbine that would have been very very small or I should write it as nothing but negligible. Okay. So, because of uh, the turbine we could have got very negligible output and we know that turbine is nothing nothing but a uh, very complex device where we have to uh, manufacture certain blade angles etc and uh, then only it will be uh, giving us certain amount of power output so over here because we are getting very very or i should say the negligible amount of uh, uh, work if we are using turbine in this particular case so obviously the amount of work whatever we will be getting that will not be justifying the cost of the turbine however our throttling devices are nothing but very simple devices which are having very very small or almost negligible cost okay so because of that in practical scenarios uh, because from the turbine we will be getting negligible amount of work done whereas the cost of the turbine will be very high so because of that in uh, uh, practical scenarios throttling device is uh, implemented okay however one limitation of this cycle is there that if we were using the turbine then process would have been uh, isentropic which would have made our entire cycle as completely uh, internally reversible whereas now because in this cycle process number 3 to 4 is nothing but an irreversible process so this point you have to remember now that point uh, process number 3 to 4 now in this our uh, uh, new cycle is nothing but irreversible process so because of that what will be happening our overall cycle will not be internally reversible the other three processes of the cycle are internally reversible but the process number 3 to 4 makes the cycle as irreversible cycle okay so, uh, this cycle is uh, something which we uh, employ in our practical refrigerator and air conditioning units, whatever we use in our household applications as well. Okay. Now, uh, this what I have done over here, the same cycle I have represented on a pH diagram. Okay. So, one important point also I would like to highlight over here. If you see this pH diagram, in this pH diagram, we are having two constant pressure processes one isentropic process from 1 to 2 and one isenthalpic process from 3 to 4. Now this process number 3 to 4 is actually irreversible process. So uh, in actual practice if we have to represent this process generally we will not be uh, representing this one with a continuous line uh, rather we should represent this process with the help of a dotted line. So this point you have to remember that when we will be uh, plotting an ideal vapor compression uh, refrigeration cycle on any of the property diagrams we will be representing all the processes with our continuous lines or form lines the only process number three to four we have to always represent with the help of dotted line because it is an irreversible process okay uh, so now let me just uh, briefly explain uh, the thermodynamic analysis of this uh, cycle so what we are having in this cycle the process number 4 to 1 is happening inside an evaporator and uh, evaporator is nothing but a steady flow device. So in a steady flow device we know that Q what we are doing we are adding QL amount of heat. So say if I uh, do this analysis on per kg basis so what we will be having QL uh, and then we are having fluid which is entering with enthalpy 4 okay and here we are having if say W amount of work plus the uh, fluid is leaving with enthalpy 1 and what I am considering that we are having negligible kinetic and uh, changes in kinetic and potential energies. As this is a uh, pure heat transfer process, so here work done is nothing but equal to 0. So ultimately we will be finding that QL is nothing but equal to H1 minus H4. Similarly, if we try to find out the 
amount of heat whatever has been rejected in the condenser on per kg basis that will be uh, coming out to be h2 minus h3 so because of that what will be happening because now this is a cyclic process so for a thermodynamic cycle w net is nothing but equal to q h minus q well net amount of heat transfer so ultimately we will be finding that h2 minus h3 minus h1 minus h4 is nothing but our work done or if i calculate apply uh, the steady flow energy equation between point number 1 to 1 uh, 1 to 2 finally i will be getting in the form of enthalpy work is nothing but h2 minus h1 whatever the work which is added to the compressor and the process number 3 to 4 is a isenthalpic process so over here we will not be having any work interaction okay so now if we have to uh, define the cop of the actual cycle so cop of the actual cycle will be nothing but equal to net for uh, sorry whatever our desired output so desired output over here is h1 minus h4 divided by whatever the amount of work we have supplied to achieve this output so that is amount of work is nothing but equal to h2 minus h1 okay now as i have told you uh, in case of power cycles that what is the effect of different parameters on the efficiency of the power cycle similarly what you can do you can determine the uh, effect of different parameters on the cop of this refrigeration cycle so let me consider one of the parameter for example if you increase the uh, say either pressure or temperature of the evaporator in that case what will be happening our new cycle will be going somewhere over here okay so because of this what will be happening uh, whatever the area we are having within this ph diagram that amount of area will be actually decreasing so because of that our uh, work input to the device will be decreasing so it means if we are increasing the temperature of the evaporator or pressure of the evaporator by increasing temperature and pressure of the evaporator our cop will be increasing similarly if we decrease either pressure or temperature of the condenser that will also result in increasing cop of this actual cycle okay uh, cop of this ideal vapor compression cycle so what you can do uh, the way i have explained in case of power cycles you can employ same formulation then you can determine the effect of different parameters on the cop of this cycle so this is uh, one typical representation of a household refrigerator so which i have included over here just to give you the knowledge that uh, uh, what are the different locations at which uh, different uh, components of a refrigeration cycles are located okay so uh, this top compartment is nothing but our uh, freezer where we are having very low temperature or i should say uh, sub zero temperature so over here i have represented temperature as minus 18 degree celsius so what we have to do uh, this part should include the coldest part of the cycle so the coldest part of the cycle is nothing but our evaporator coil so that's why what we are having over here evaporator coil is actually passing through the freezer unit okay and this evaporator coil is taking ql amount of heat from the freezer unit okay and once uh, this uh, uh, heat has been added in the evaporator after that we have to uh, send the refrigerant or our working medium to a device which is known as compressor what compressor does it increases the pressure from evaporator pressure say pe and it makes this pressure to nothing but pc condenser pressure okay where pc is greater than pe while it is increasing the pressure it also increases the temperature as we have seen from our property diagrams and uh, uh, this temperature over here will be nothing but here temperature of working medium will be greater than the temperature of surroundings okay so because of that what will be happening now our working medium will be transferring the heat in condenser coils into our surroundings and surrounding we are considering over here say if refrigerator is uh, kept in our kitchen so say uh, kitchen here is uh, having temperature of 25 degrees celsius so obviously after the compression process uh, the temperature of working fluid will be greater than 25 degrees celsius because of which in the condenser coil what will be happening heat will be 
added to the surroundings okay so uh, these tubes which leads to the rejection of heat into the surrounding from the working medium these tubes are nothing but our condenser uh, tubes okay so this device uh, these are the tubes which are at the back of the refrigerator these are nothing but our condenser coils and after condenser what we are having we are having a uh, throttling device so throttling as i have already told you either we can achieve with the help of capillary tube or we can employ certain porous plug kind of thing which can reduce the pressure of the working medium so over here we are considering say capillary tube now one important point you have to remember because after the uh, throttling process what happens the temperature over here so if i am writing it as say uh, tl this temperature is very very small in comparison to the temperature of the surrounding so because of that what will be happening if we keep the uh, larger length of this portion open to the atmosphere in that case what will be happening uh, there will be unwanted uh, heating of the refrigerating medium so that's why whenever the uh, units of refrigeration are designed this throttling device is placed as much as uh, close to that of evaporator okay so this is the typical representation of household refrigerator and uh, what are the arrangement of different uh, components that we have seen over here uh, now let me discuss that uh, what will be happening in uh, actual scenarios because till now we were discussing our uh, ideal cycle so in actual scenarios as i have told in case of the actual power cycles what we will be having we will be having additional losses because of the friction okay and these losses also known as pressure drop losses okay so because of the friction what happens there will be certain pressure drop in the pipe so these are also known as pressure drop losses and one additional loss will be coming because of the heat transfer okay so because whenever we are having the arrangement of different components we are having certain pipelines in between the different components and majority of the pi uh, times these pipes are exposed to ambient and as their uh, temperature is different than the ambient temperature there will be some heat transfer with the surrounding okay so these two are the majority of the uh, uh, so these two are actually the reasons behind the deviation of cycle from the ideal one okay so uh, what we are having let me start with the uh, point at the end of the evaporator so what we are doing at the end of evaporator uh, in actual practice we are considering point number a okay so what we have studied in ideal cycle we were looking for maintaining the working medium at point saturated vapor point okay however in actual practice what we do we slightly superheat this point why we go for this superheating because in actual practice it is uh, not always possible to exactly control the exit point of the working medium okay so that's why what we do we take certain uh, amount of safety factor into consideration so that every time our uh, uh working medium at the outlet of the evaporator is nothing but in the either in the saturated vapor region or in the superheated region so that's why this point number 8 is nothing but slightly superheated okay so this is one deviation then what is happening when this point number 8 is moving uh or uh, entering into the compressor inlet we are having certain connecting tube in between okay so what will be happening first inside this tube there will be certain pressure loss so because of that first thing is happening there is certain pressure drop and at the same point of time because the temperature of point number 8 is nothing but less than the temperature of surroundings so that's why whatever the pipe is connected in between the compressor inlet and evaporator outlet in between that pipe also there will be certain amount of heat addition into the working medium so because of that there will be certain heating also okay so this point number 1 is actually entering at the inlet of the compressor okay now what we are having inside this compressor uh, we are actually increasing the pressure of the working medium okay so uh, when we are increasing the pressure because of that what will be happening first due to the friction because there will be some friction between the uh, cylinder wall 
and the piston so because of that what will be happening there will be certain irreversibilities associated okay so these irreversibilities because of the friction will lead to increase in entropy so that's why uh, if you see what we have done over here we have represented process number 1 to 2 and this line 1 to 2 is nothing but slightly tilted from the vertical direction so it means during the process number 1 to 2 we are having certain amount of uh, entropy generation okay and this entropy generation is happening because of which effect this is happening because of the friction effect okay and then one more additional thing will be happening inside the compressor when we are increasing the pressure of the refrigerant what is happening uh, basically the temperature of the working medium is also increasing so because of this increase of temperature there will be certain heat loss into the surrounding so there will be certain transfer of heat into the surrounding through the walls of the compressor also so as this heat is moving out of the compressor so this heat will be carrying certain amount of entropy with it so this point process number 1 to 2 dash is nothing but representing the loss of entropy inside the compressor due to the heat transfer process so it means 1 to 2 dash is nothing but loss of entropy and this loss of entropy is happening why this is happening because of the heat transfer process okay so over here if you see it means if we are having more amount of heat transfer we will be having more loss of entropy and in that case what will be happening our uh, cycle will be actually uh, decreasing the overall uh, area inside the temperature uh, entropy loop so that's why what will be happening overall it will be resulting in uh, decrease in net work uh, input requirement and uh, as a whole our cop of the cycle will be increasing so it means this process number 1 to 2 which is happening because of the friction this process is nothing but undesirable over here because it is increasing the entropy or in turn it is increasing the requirement of work input whereas this process number 1 to 2 dash is nothing but it's a desirable process over here why it is desirable over here because it is uh, improving the cop or performance of the overall cycle now in actual scenario what will be happening depending upon the dominance of the process whether we are having dominance of heat transfer or we are having dominance of the uh, friction depending upon that we will be finding that we will be having our actual process somewhere uh, actual exit point somewhere at say point number 3 dash okay so this whatever dotted line i have represented this is nothing but coming from the relative competition in between the process number 1 to 2 dash and process number 1 to 2 okay and now uh, during the uh, process number 3 dash to process number four days once again because we are having the condensation process and uh, uh, this condensation process is happening inside the condenser which consists of large number of tubes so inside these tubes we will be having certain pressure drop so because of that the pressure will not remain constant okay and once again what we want to do we want to fully ensure uh, that inside the uh, after the condenser we are having complete saturated liquid state so many times we go for certain amount of sub cooling also okay so this point number 4 is nothing but at the outlet of the uh, condenser and after uh, condenser and expansion device as we are having a large pipeline so in that large pipeline we will be having certain amount of pressure drop also okay so this 4 to 5 process is nothing but this is the drop in pressure which and uh, as well as the loss of heat to the surrounding which is resulting in point number 5 at the inlet of throttle and then uh, the expansion is happening in between the throttle process from uh, point number 5 to point number 6 and then if you try to see over here 6 point represent the exit of expansion device and 7 represent the inlet to the evaporator so in between point 6 to 7 we have not represented any 
pressure loss. Why we have not represented? Because these uh, exit of expansion device and inlet of evaporator are very close to each other. So that's why we will be having very small length pipeline over here because of which the pressure drop between point number 6 to 7 will be nothing but negligible. Okay. So uh, what we have seen that over here that if we are uh, considering the actual analysis of our uh, vapor compression refrigeration system then how our property diagram will be looking okay so this we have seen uh, so what i will do now uh, whatever we have discussed uh, with this much only i will try to conclude our discussion on uh, uh, refrigeration cycles though uh, for refrigeration also we are having large number of arrangements intercooling cascade refrigeration uh, then we are having multi-stage refrigeration systems, uh, but these are beyond the scope of uh, our course and in particular uh, students who are in BTEC mechanical engineering program, they will be having a course on refrigeration and uh, air conditioning. I think so there they will be discussing about uh, all these different variants of the refrigeration cycles in detail. Okay. Apart from this one important point I would like to highlight over here that whatever the uh, working fluid we are using over here. So you can see that uh, inside these tubes of the refrigeration device we are having certain working medium. So that working medium whatever we use uh, in case of refrigeration that is something which is known as a refrigerant. So we are having large number of refrigerants available and uh, there is a certain procedure for the selection of refrigerants also. So that is also beyond the scope of our course and we will not discuss it over here. One important point also I would like to highlight as we have seen uh, that the reverse of Carnot cycle uh, when we are using phase change working medium is resulting in refrigeration cycle. Similarly, if we do the reverse of Breton cycle, then we got nothing but our uh, air refrigeration cycles. Okay, so the reverse of Breton cycle, particularly open type Breton cycle, uh, is mainly employed in aircraft refrigeration. Okay, so that is also beyond the scope of our course, and we will not discuss over here. Now, uh, as I concluded the discussion on uh, refrigeration, but one important uh, point I would like to discuss over here regarding one important process which is nothing but a throttling process okay so if you recall our uh, earlier lectures once i told you that in case of throttling process what happens we decrease the pressure and whatever the throttling process till date we studied wherever we have employed the throttle uh, in case of uh, refrigeration also there also we saw that when the expansion is happening inside the throttling device we are having decrease in temperature of the working medium okay and in uh, one of the doubt clearing session one student also raised this question that uh, uh, always in case of a throttle there is decrease in temperature or there can be some other situation so uh, that part whatever uh, we are discussing about the throttling process that is something which is answered with the help of uh, one term which is known as a joule thomson coefficient okay so uh, let me first describe the throttling process so what we are having over here uh, i have considered a pipe and inside this pipe we are having certain valve which is actually uh, creating some sort of obstruction to the flow okay so because of that what will be happening if say we are having certain pressure p1 and certain temperature T1 at the inlet. Now because of this obstruction always what will be happening there will be decrease of pressure. So pressure will always decrease. So that's why what has happened over here the pressure has decreased from 800 kPa to uh, 200 kPa. However if you see the temperature so this temperature at the inlet was nothing but 20 degrees Celsius and for the temperature at outlet I have included over here three conditions temperature can be greater than 20 degrees celsius it can be equal to 20 degrees celsius or it can be less than 20 degrees celsius so till this uh, stage we have studied only one possibility that temperature will be less than 20 but 
what i am saying that it can be either equal to 20 or it can be greater than 20 okay so how these other possibilities uh, can be achieved this is something which is defined with the help of joule thomson coefficient okay uh, so generally what we do we define joule thomson coefficient with the symbol mu j t and if the value of joule thomson coefficient is nothing but equal to zero in that case what will be happening our temperature will be remaining unchanged it means t1 will be equal to t2 and if the value of this joule thomson coefficient is nothing but greater than zero in that case what will be happening temperature of point number one will be less uh, sorry so if uh, we are having positive joule thomson coefficient in that case what will be happening we will be having cooling of the medium so that's why temperature of point number one will be greater than temperature of point two and if we are having negative joule thomson coefficient in case of negative joule thomson coefficient what will be happening temperature of point number one will be less than the temperature of point number two so it means if joule thomson coefficient is less than zero in that case what will be happening we will be having heating of the working medium and if joule thomson coefficient is greater than zero in that case we will be having cooling of the working medium okay and if temperature is equal to zero, uh, sorry, if joule thomson coefficient is equal to zero, in that case, uh, working medium will be having same temperature at both the inlet and outlet of the throttling device. Okay. So now what we will be doing, uh, this joule thomson coefficient is particularly explained with the help of uh, temperature pressure plot. So what we have done over here, this is nothing but along the ordinate we have taken temperature and along uh, FCS we are having pressure okay then we are having a work uh, tube and inside this tube we have taken some porous plug okay so we are having some porous plug over here and at the inlet which is taking place uh, so flow inside this tube is happening from right to left so at the inlet we have fixed some pressure and some temperature so say this is my inlet point so at inlet we are having pressure as P1 and temperature as nothing but equal to T1. Okay. And then at the outlet, we have got pressure P2 and temperature T2. Say this is my first outlet which I have got from this uh, porous plug. Now, if I once again repeat the experiment by changing the thickness of this porous plug. So now what I will be doing, I will vary the thickness of this porous plug okay so if i vary the thickness of this porous plug what will be happening if i keep on increasing the thickness of the porous plug what will be happening our pressure will keep on decreasing okay so when we were having say t thickness for this small t thickness we were getting this point if i keep on increasing the thickness from point number uh, from uh, value t in that case what will be happening the value of pressure will keep on decreasing okay and corresponding to each value of pressure if we are having over here some thermometer and with the help of this thermometer if we are uh, measuring the temperature at the uh, exit of the throttling process so we will be finding different different uh, exit states okay so these different exit states are represented over here okay now if we join the locus of these different exit states what we will be finding we will be finding a line okay and as we know the process inside the throttling device is nothing but an isenthalpic process so that's why whatever the line we have joined over here this line is nothing but a constant enthalpy line okay now what we do uh, from here only the definition of joule thomson coefficient evolves okay so if we take the slope of this line which is plotted on a temperature pressure plot so if we take del t by del p of constant enthalpy line that gives us nothing but our joule thomson coefficient okay so you will be finding 
that this del t by del t uh, del p at h is equal to constant it means slope of this line nothing but gives us the value of joule thomson coefficient okay so let me consider the slope in this region so say this is my point number 2 and this is my point number 1 so in this region what we will be finding our del p by del p will be nothing but equal to t2 minus t1 divided by t2 minus p1 and as in this particular region what will be happening we are having value of t2 as more in comparison to t1 so that's why our numerator will be positive and value of t2 is less than t1 so that's why our denominator is nothing but negative so it means in this range beyond this point or to the right of this point what we will be having we will be having the value of this slope as nothing but equal to negative okay and in the left of uh this line what we will be having left of this line uh t2 is over here which is greater uh then sorry yeah so t2 is over here and then we are having t1 over here and corresponding values of p2 and t1 so this will be actually uh, both will be giving us the negative sign numerator and denominator and finally we will be getting that slope in this region is nothing but our positive slope so because of that what will be happening in this particular region we will be having nothing but cooling of our uh, medium and in this region over here we will be having nothing but our heating of the working medium and we will be having some point uh, in this curve at which slope of temperature and pressure uh, curve will be becoming equal to zero so this particular point is something which is known as a inversion point okay the point at which slope is equal to zero this point is known as nothing but our inversion point so it means in the left of the inversion point we will be having cooling of the working medium so over here we will be having cooling and in the right of inversion point we will be having nothing but heating of the working medium okay so in case of a throttling device it means we may have different reasons of heating and cooling now if we repeat this experiment for different values of enthalpy say the first line which i have represented over here is for enthalpy equal to h1 second is corresponding to some enthalpy h2 which is greater than h1 and then similarly we are having enthalpies h3 and h4 we will be finding different constant enthalpy plots and uh, these plots are uh, these lines are nothing but on a temperature pressure plot okay over here what we are having the point at which slope is zero for a single plot that was known as nothing but inversion point now if we take the locus of different inversion points and if we join a line that particular line is something which is known as inversion line okay so now if you try to see in the left of this inversion line we are having value of joule thomson coefficient nothing but greater than equal to zero so in this region we will be having nothing but our cooling effect okay and uh, what we are having in the right of this inversion line we are having value of joule thomson coefficient as less than 0 and here we will be having heating of the working medium in an throttling process okay so uh, from this one we can see that at pressure p equal to 0 so when we are having zero pressure at that point the inversion curve touches the temperature axis and the maximum value of this temperature is something which is known as maximum inversion temperature okay and if we see any enthalpy line beyond this maximum inversion temperature line we will be finding for that we will be always having heating so it means for enthalpy equal to h4 as uh, the temperature uh, inversion line is actually lying uh, sorry this line is lying to the right of 
the inversion line so always we will be having heating when any throttling process will be occurring uh, across uh, along this line okay so uh, this is about the temperature pressure plot and the joule thomson coefficient now let me specify few more characteristics of the joule thomson coefficient so what we will do we will first start with the uh, general equation of enthalpy for any substance so we know that uh, general expression of enthalpy is equal to cp into dt so this cp into dt we have already studied and this much is only applicable for an ideal gas however if we have to consider a real fluid along with this term we will be having one additional term uh, which will be equal to specific volume minus temperature times del v by del t at constant pressure okay into dp so this is the uh, formulation of enthalpy for a real fluid however this formulation of enthalpy is something which is derived from the thermodynamic property relations which are beyond the scope of our course so that's why directly i am writing the formulation of this enthalpy equation okay now we know for an throttling process dh is nothing but equal to zero so what will be happening from here if i find uh, the value of del t by del p because this dh will be equal to zero if i bring this value to the left hand side we will be having minus cp into del t and ultimately if i divide throughout by del p i can find del t by del p and this is defined nothing but at constant enthalpy which is coming out to be minus 1 by cp times specific volume minus p times del v by del t at constant pressure okay so this is nothing but this is the definition of our joule thomson coefficient mu j t now let us consider that if we are having a ideal gas we know already for ideal gas what will be happening pv will be equal to rt and from this we will be finding that v is nothing but equal to rt by p now if i substitute this formulation over here what will be happening value of mu jt i will be finding as equal to if we substitute from here this del v by del t will be becoming r by p uh, and we will be having one t over here and r t by p will once again become equal to that of a specific volume so specific volume minus specific volume ultimately i will be finding for an ideal gas my value of joule thomson coefficient is nothing but equal to zero so it means if i plot my temperature and pressure diagram for an ideal gas what will be happening though we are having the throttling process but if we are having a constant enthalpy line for that constant enthalpy line temperature will also remain constant irrespective of the values of pressure say we are having certain pressure p2 over here and some another pressure p1 over here so it means for an ideal gas what we are having enthalpy is nothing but a function of temperature only which we have already seen also okay so i will uh, now conclude this lecture with the uh, discussion of joule thomson coefficient 